Hello everyone, welcome to my YouTube channel, The Teaching Show. If you find this video useful, please don't forget to like it and subscribe to my channel. Please hit the bell icon for more updates. So in uh, this uh, series of video lecture, I am trying to build up a course on process calculation. Last video we had seen an introduction to recycle. So we will be talking more about recycle in this video. Okay. So first of all, let's discuss advantages of recycling. Uh, one advantage we had seen with the help of problem 19 that it can be used to recover and reuse the expensive reactants which other, otherwise may have been uh, rejected as a waste stream. Okay. Now second uh, advantage is recovery of catalyst. Sometimes in a reactor we use very expensive catalyst like platinum or rhodium salts etc. And we need to uh, recover that from the product stream otherwise the cost of the process will go up. So recovery of catalyst is another way we just separate the catalyst and recycle it back to the reactor. Then third advantage is dilution of a process stream. Let's say that I have a slurry which has a very high concentration of solids. Now I want to filter this slurry, but it's very difficult to handle uh, when the slurry has high concentration of solids. Uh, so in order to, you know, for the filter to operate properly, I would like to dilute the feed, but instead of diluting it with fresh liquid, I can dilute it with some amount of filtrate, okay? So it will be like recycling the filtrate back to the filter process so dilution of a process stream that is another advantage of recycling then uh, another advantage is control of process variable uh, suppose let's say that a reaction is highly exothermic and it is generating a large amount of heat uh, now you want to control the amount of heat which is um, produced because other, uh, you should have a control on the reactor so i want to control the temperature one way of doing this is that if i have inerts i can dilute my process stream uh, or my so that my reactant concentration goes down so reactant concentration goes down reaction goes down and less amount of heat is liberated okay so i can uh, use recycling for control of a process variable such as temperature then um, recycling is also used in um, some of the uh, units like ac or refrigerator where you have a working fluid or a refrigerant which uh, is recycled again and again uh, without you know rejecting it so circulation of a working fluid like a refrigerant it's again an advantage of recycling fine so now let's go back to the business uh, i will take another problem i will take two more problems today um, or in this video on recycle so first one deals with calcining a solid i have a solid a feed uh, okay so the basis is not given i am taking the basis as 100 kg of fresh feed you can read the problem statement from here i will just discuss the problem statement with the help of the fully labeled flowchart which i have prepared okay so i have a fresh feed which is 100 kgs and it contains 70 percent of solid and i want to calcine it so that my final product contains 97 percent of the solids but what is happening is that before feeding to the calciner i i have to make make sure that the feed to the calciner contains no more than 15 percent by weight of water because if the water percentage is high then it leads to lumping and sticking so one way is that i can take this dry product and part of it i can mix with the incoming feed and then make sure that the combined feed to the calciner has a um, water content which is about 15 percent okay so this is a problem of recycle let's handle it okay so uh, previously i'm showing a mixer and a divider but i can just within the flow chart i can just replace it with a mixing point and a splitting point okay so i'm just doing away with all those blocks and this is my mixing point and this is my splitting point okay so let's check now degree of freedom at various subsystems first i will check my degree of freedom at mixing point let's see how many variables i have m2 and m6 2 and how many independent equations i have 2 so degree of freedom is 0 let's check at calciner 
I have m3, m4 and m2, three unknown variables. I can write only two independent equations. So degree of freedom is one. At the splitting point, I have m4, m5 and m6, three unknowns and only. So at splitting point, uh, let's see, my degree of freedom is uh, three unknowns and one equation. So it is two. Uh, for the overall system, let's check degree of freedom. Uh, I have two unknowns m5 and m3 and I have two independent balance equations. So degree of freedom is zero. So I have a uh, degree of freedom zero uh, at two points. I can start from any of these. Okay, you must be wondering why I am uh, saying that only one independent equation is there. Okay, let's see this in detail. Fine. Uh, Suppose I just assume that I have two independent equations because I have two components, right? So let's first write down a uh, solid balance. So it will be 0.97 M4 is equal to 0.97 M5 plus 0.97 M6. 0.97 will cancel throughout and I will be left with M4 is equal to M5 plus M6. Now let's write water balance that will be 0.03 M4 is equal to 0.03 M5 plus 0.03 M6. 0.03 will cancel throughout and what I will be left uh, is M4 is equal to M5 plus M6. So both the equations are same. So you will observe that both the material balance equations they give you the same equation okay so this is your rule of thumb if two molecular species are in the same ratio to each other in all the streams then balances on those species will not be independent equations this is what is happening see the uh, the concentration in all these three streams is the same Okay, so the ratio of solid to water is the same in all these three uh, streams. So, because the ratio is same, if I take balance on these species, then they will not be independent. Instead of two independent equations, now I will have only one independent equation. Keep this in mind. Whenever you have two molecular species which are in the same ratio in all the streams, see all the streams means all the input and the output streams, okay? Then you don't have um, two independent balance equations but only one, okay? So now let's see calcining of a solid, okay? So uh, first I will start with overall balance. Fine. So let's take overall balance. Uh, feed contains 70% solid and uh, product contains 97% of solid. So in is equal to out. So directly I get M5 that is equal to 72.165 kg. Then I'm taking total balance. 100 is equal to M5 plus M3. M3 is the water which is being evaporated in the dryer. So directly I, from this equation, I get M3 is equal to 27.835 kg. Next, uh, my degree of freedom was zero on the mixing point. So I'm going to take balance over there. So total balance M2 is equal to M1 plus M6. Put the values, I get a relation in M2 and M6. Similarly, if I take a solid balance, again, I will get a relation in M2 and M6. If I solve these two equations simultaneously, then I will get the value of M2 and M6. Now, what is left is just my M4 value. So if I go back and see, that M4, since I know now M5 from overall balance and M6 from the balance at the uh, mixing point. So now two variables are known. So now at splitting point, my degree of freedom has reduced to zero. I have only one unknown and I have one equation. So I can solve it and calculate, to do the total balance on the splitting point and get the value of M4. So my balanced flow sheet, it looks something like this. Okay, so I have solved this problem with recycle very easily by just following what we have developed the methodology we have developed till now okay let's take another problem this is a problem of distillation column with reflux and partial reboiler again the problem statement you can pause the video read the problem statement but i will uh, explain this problem with the help of the flowchart which i have made already this is the fully labeled flowchart okay uh, the basis is 100 moles 
of uh, benzene and toluene coming in and it is an equimolar mixture so i have 50 moles of benzene and 50 moles of toluene now this is a distillation column so i have two product streams which are coming out one is the overhead product and this is the bottom product now uh, there are four process specifications which are given one of the process specification what it says is that whatever the vapor which is coming it is condensed completely split into two equal fractions one is returned as the reflux to the column and the other is drawn as the um, overhead product so that's why i'm just labeling as n3 and n3 okay and you will get the relation then n2 is equal to 2 times n3 then another product specific uh, another problem specification which is given is that 89.2 percent of the benzene which is fed to the column it comes out in the overhead product okay then let's see the bottom portion again uh, whatever the liquid which is coming out from the column it is fed to a reboiler now reboiler it is just vaporizing some am amount of the liquid which is coming in and further it says that it vaporizes 45 percent of the incoming stream so you have a relation between n4 and n5 this is the third process specification which is given then because in the reboiler a portion of it is vaporized and i am assuming that this is the equilibrium process so another process specification which is given is that the equilibrium relation between the uh, mole fraction of benzene in this liquid stream and the mole fraction of benzene in this vapor stream so these four process specifications have been given so let's quickly check what are the degree of freedom on column uh, there are six unknowns you can see and there are two material balance and one relation n2 is equal to two times n3 so i have degree of freedom which is equal to three at the column let's check at the condenser um, i have only one independent balance equations by our rule of thumb and there are two unknowns n2 and n3 so degree of freedom is one at the reboiler i have one two three four five six six uh, unknowns i have four equations two material balance one is the equilibrium relation between these two mole fractions and one relation between n4 and n5 so degree of freedom is two i cannot use any of these subsystems let's take overall uh, system and check its degree of freedom so there are two material balances and one process specification what is that 89 percent 89.2 percent of the benzene which is fed comes out in the overhead product so there is one process specification and two material balance equation so there are three equations three unknowns n3 n6 and this mole fraction so degree of freedom is zero so let me solve that so i will start calculation uh, process first i will use process specification it will directly give me the value of the overhead which is coming okay now if i take total balance then i can also get the amount of bottom product which i am getting then i take benzene balance and get the mole fraction of benzene in the bottom product so next what i will do is i will just update my flow sheet with these three values which i have calculated then again i will go and check my degree of freedom now since n3 is known so degree of freedom has been reduced by one so it is two on the column at the reboiler now degree of freedom is zero because i know two of these values so there are four equations four unknowns it is zero at the condenser again my degree of freedom has reduced to zero okay so uh, there is no brainer uh, what is the equation n2 is equal to n3 plus n3 so n2 is equal to 92 moles quickly i can solve so the remaining uh, part of the answer i am showing over here so taking balance on reboiler first i will use process specification number one which gives me a relation between n5 and n4 then process specification number two which is the equilibrium relation i know the mole fraction of benzene in the bottom product which was 0.1 if i put it in this relation i get the mole fraction of benzene in stream 5 then i take a total balance on the reboiler and i get the values of n4 and n5 i just keep this in mind that n5 i am replacing by 0.45 n4 okay then a benzene balance will give me my uh, mole fraction of benzene you can stop at this um, pause the video on this slide and do the calculations and check whether you get the same answer so this is my uh, final uh, this thing uh, balanced flow chart okay thanks a lot uh, for watching this video if you like this 
please don't forget to subscribe to my channel and uh, i look forward to making more such videos thank you